In today's video, we're not talking 80s and 90s action figures, but we're talking about something just as nostalgic and just as big a part of my childhood. WWF VHS goodness. With its body slam, side suplexes, clotheslines, drop kicks, and power slams that you're after, increase your library of WWF videos with some of these spectacular annual WWF events. What is going on? Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you're doing well. Now I'm back in the cave today to share with you a haul of WWF VHS tapes. And as I mentioned before, WWF wrestling tapes were a massive part of my childhood because growing up in Australia as a wrestling fan without cable television, there was no regular WWF programming on free to air TV. So the only way that I followed the WWF was through the videotapes from the, the video store and also WWF magazine which I picked up once a month uh, from the newsagent. So that was the only source of WWF wrestling content. And few things got me more fired up as a kid than having the chance to go to the local video store and, and pick out a tape to rent. And because of that, some of these wrestling tapes, some of the covers on these tapes are just like permanently imprinted into my memory. So it doesn't get much more nostalgic than this. And as I mentioned in a previous video, the goal with the WWF VHS collection is to basically pick up all the pay-per-view events from 1988 to 1995, which was kind of the core era of the WWF of my childhood. I was introduced to wrestling in 1992, uh, and once I found out about it, I was kind of going back a few years, picking up all the tapes, watching all the tapes, trying to catch up, and from there following it until about 1995. So that's the era, and that's the goal. Um, so we're talking about, I don't know, maybe 40 tapes, between you know your SummerSlam, Survivor Series, WrestleMania, um, Royal Rumble, a couple of King King of the Ring events, probably about 40 tapes across those eight years. That's the goal. I've got about 10 in the collection already. We've got eight or nine to talk about today, so let's rip into it. All right, so first up, we've got SummerSlam 1990, which is an upgrade of a tape that I already had in my collection. But the tape that I already had, the previous version, had a really knocked about case and it had a little bit of mold in the in the tape spool. So we've got an upgrade here, it's in much nicer condition, and it's an X rental version of this event. And, you know, looking at this event, I love the double main event because SummerSlam 1990 is hot on the heels of, of uh, WrestleMania 6, where the Ultimate Warrior beat Hulk Hogan for the WWF World title, which was one of the more iconic matches of my childhood. So we've got the Ultimate Warrior who was feuding with Ravishing Rick Rude at the time. They're going to square off for the for the uh, world title in a cage match But obviously in 1990 the Hulkster is still the people's champ So he's got double billing and he's feuding with the earthquake So and this is the kind of matches the, these are the kind of Hulk Hogan matches that I really enjoyed growing up Where you've got the Hulkster kind of uh, really selling the offense of a monster heel character like earthquake But then obviously hulking up and, and getting the job done not exactly unpredictable, but for an eight-year-old little Hulkamaniac, I, I just loved it. So really happy to have a much cleaner version of SummerSlam 1990 in the collection. Next up, we've got the 1991 Royal Rumble. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned before, the Royal Rumble was always my absolute favorite out of the four big pay-per-view events each year. I love the spectacle of the 30-man battle royal format of the Royal Rumble. The draw always brought drama. You got to see wrestlers who were in completely different kind of storylines who would never normally cross paths, kind of square off against one another and have their moments. So it teased different feuds. And uh, obviously each Royal Rumble, there was probably only a handful of performers that had a chance to win. But watching it as a kid, you know, with the whole friend versus friend, foe versus foe format, you know, I thought anyone had a chance to win. So I absolutely loved it. And of the, of the various Royal Rumbles throughout my childhood, 1991 was one of my favorites, probably the, in the top three or four Royal Rumbles for me. But unfortunately, this pickup turned out to be a little bit of a fail because when I saw this, I picked this up from eBay. When I looked at the eBay listing, there was no photos of the actual tape itself. Uh, I messaged the seller and said, hey, can you send me a photo? Is there any mold within the tape spool? Just want to check the condition. They said, oh, no, there's no mold, but, you know, do you want me to send you a photo anyway? I said, of course, yep, send me a photo. 
I got the photo. It was a bad quality photo. I'd been told there was no mold, so I didn't really give it a second look. I was like, yep, let's do it. And um, turns out when, when, when the tape arrives and I open it up, it's not just got a spot of mold, it's absolutely covered. It's in horrible shape. So now I've got to work out how I go about cleaning it. There's a, a place near me that preserves and transfers VHS to digital formats. I'm gonna try them. If anyone watching this has any ideas, let me know, because if I can't clean that mold up fully, this is, this is probably gonna go in the bin, or you know, the tape itself will go in the bin and I'll just display the case. Alrighty, next up, we've got SummerSlam 1991, which is probably one of the kind of top five or, or top seven most memorable VHS tapes of my childhood, purely because of the whole kind of match made in heaven, match made in hell promotional approach that I always remember as a kid. Uh, obviously the match made in heaven being the wedding of Macho Man Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth, which, which I clearly remember as a kid. And then you've also got the match made in hell, which was a handicap match with the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan, two of my childhood favorites, teaming up against Sergeant Slaughter, Colonel Mustafa and General Adnan. So that was a memorable one, but, but it doesn't end there. There's some other matches that I remember watching as a kid from this tape. You've got Virgil taking on the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and beating him for the Million Dollar Belt. You've got the Jowl House match between the Big Boss Man and the Mountie. And you've got a match that I don't actually remember, which but, but it sounds awesome. And that is my favorite tag team in my childhood, uh, the Legion of Doom taking on the Nasty Boys in a no disqualification, I believe it was marketed as a street fight format match for the tag team titles. That's awesome. I'm gonna have to give that one a watch because I don't remember it, but I always loved the Legion of Doom. Now, this is obviously a super nostalgic one for me, like I mentioned, so one that I'm really happy to have in my collection, but a little bit of a bummer with this one as well. When I tested this one out, at times throughout the tape, it's, there's a bit of fuzziness there, which is a little bit disappointing, but that's just the way it goes. And I'm not surprised because, look, if, if my memories are anything to go by, this one would have been a popular one in the local video store back in the day. In any case, happy to have SummerSlam 91 in the collection. Now I mentioned SummerSlam 1991 being one of my top five, top seven favorite WWF VHS tapes of my childhood. This next one is number one. It's where it all started for me, and I'm talking about the 1992 Royal Rumble. Uh, like I said, this is the event that introduced me to wrestling and got me hooked, and uh, just some awesome matches. You've got an intercontinental title match with Rowdy Roddy Piper winning the belt from the Mountie. You've got the tag team champions, the Legion of Doom, who I mentioned a moment ago, defending the titles against the natural disasters. But as with most Royal Rumbles for me, but also this one especially, it's all about the Royal Rumble match. And this one was an absolute beauty for a few reasons. Uh, you might remember if you're watching this video that Royal Rumble 1992 was the first time that going into the Rumble, the world title was vacant and therefore the winner of the Royal Rumble would be crowned champion. Uh, which was which was special in itself. Now the, the the competitors that made up the the entrance to the 1992 Royal Rumble are pretty much the the classic rest, WWF roster of my childhood, with one exception, the Ultimate Warrior. But I mean, you have Hulk Hogan, you've got the Undertaker, you've got Ric Flair, Macho Man, Randy Savage, Jake the Snake, Roberts, the British Bulldog. I could go on and on. All of my favourites growing up as a kid, with the exception of the Ultimate Warrior are in the mix. Now, obviously, Ric Flair was new to the WWF at the time of Royal Rumble 1992. He was already a wrestling legend, but but obviously, you know, new to the WWF, and Bobby the Brain Heenan just sold him perfectly on commentary. And what I always remember is up until the, the 1992 Rumble, no early draw had, had won the Rumble. Now, Ric Flair comes out uh, number three, and you know Bobby Heenan reacts beautifully. It's not fair to Flair, and uh, you know Ric Flair just just works and finesses his way over the course of an hour in an amazing performance to win the Rumble, and then top it off with just one of the one of the most, if not the most, memorable promo uh, after the tournament. So, or after the event. So just an amazing event. Uh, towards the end of the Rumble, we were left with. Uh, Hulk Hogan and Sid Justice, who were kind of somewhat friendly, I believe, at that time. Um, Sid Justice eliminated the Hulkster, turning heel 
and then Hulk Hogan in a classic heel move himself after already being eliminated helped Ric Flair pull Sid Justice out. So we kind of, you know, we were introduced to the feud that I remember between the Hulkster and Sid Justice. So just a lot of fun stuff with this. Now I mentioned with SummerSlam 1991 that when I tested that out, there's a bit of fuzziness with that. Unfortunately, there's quite a bit of fuzziness through moments when I tested out this tape as well, which is which is a bummer, but again, it doesn't surprise me that, that some of the most iconic events are the ones that, you know, show some play wear, but that's just the way it goes. Um, and, and to the credit of the seller who sold most of these tapes to me, I hit them up on eBay and said, hey, listen, here's some photos just showing that the playback is pretty ordinary because the seller told me they were tested and working and the seller gave me a partial refund. So these tapes really now only owe me a few bucks a piece, which is fine because at the end of the day, the WWF VHS collection is like a, a display piece with, with the chance of an occasional viewing. You know, I've mentioned before that once I've completed the collection, I, I do like the idea of watching them through sequentially and, and maybe doing a review per event or a review per year of pay-per-view. So in all likelihood, they will get the occasional watch, but 99.9% .9 of the time, they're display pieces and they display beautifully. I mean, this is probably the most iconic VHS, WWF VHS cover art of my childhood. Absolutely love it. So at the end of the day, they display well, but, but what I will say is, you know, with my goal being to tick off all of the pay-per-view events from 1988 to 1995, we're only talking about 40 tapes. So it's a bit of a, a lesson to kind of n not feel the need to rush out and overpay for these tapes, but just kind of stay patient when I find tapes in the right condition at the right price just to pick them up then because eventually I'll pick them all off and next up we've got Survivor Series 1992 and once again this is an upgrade I had this tape previously I spotted a little bit of mold on it and I uh, found another one nice and clean X rental but in good condition with no mold at the right price so um so we scoop this up and uh, another memorable event I will say this though, growing up as a kid watching Survivor Series events, what I always enjoyed the most was the four on four or five on five Survivor Series elimination matches. And on this event, we've only got one. We've got the Natural Disasters teaming up with the Nasty Boys, both as good guys, I assume, which seems a little bit odd to me. I remember those teams throughout my childhood for the most part being heels and they're taking on Money Inc. and the Beverly Brothers. So we've just got one Survivor Series match. We've got some other memorable matches though. Uh, the Undertaker taking on Kamala. We've got the UFC champion Bret Hart uh, defending the title against Shawn Michaels, which I'm sure was an awesome match. And, um, and we've got the Big Boss Man taking on Nails in a nightstick on a pole match, which was obviously super gimmicky, but I loved all those gimmicks as a kid, so that would have been a fun one. And I believe the headline bout was uh, Mr. Perfect and Macho Man Randy Savage teaming up to take on Ric Flair and Razor Ramon. So some, definitely, some, uh, definitely some matches that I remember enjoying as a kid, but my take on this as an eight-year-old in 1992 would have been more, more elimination matches, please. So happy to have a, a nice upgrade on Survivor Series 1992 in the collection. Next up, we've got the very next event after Survivor Series 1992, which is Royal Rumble 1993. Um, some interesting matches once again. Bret the Hitman Hart defending his belt against Razor Ramon. We've got another match that I definitely remember, and I, I mentioned this when I when we spoke about the, the Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels Hasbro figure that I picked up recently, and that's Shawn Michaels defending the Intercontinental title against his former tag team partner, Marty Jannetty. But just as I mentioned with the 1992 Royal Rumble, when it comes to these Royal Rumble events, for me it was it was all about the actual 30-man Royal Rumble match. And this one was, was one that I definitely remember. Uh, it was won by Yokozuna, which was pretty predictable at that time, I think, especially when the final four were Randy Savage, Bob Backlund, Rick Martel, and Yokozuna. There's only one way that's gonna go. But some, some other interesting moments that I remember uh, I was a big fan of The Undertaker growing up. You know, when I was first introduced to wrestling, I was scared of The Undertaker, but, you know, gradually I just thought he was awesome and, and, and really got behind him. And I remember The Undertaker at that point in time had a, kind of an ongoing feud with the manager Harvey Whippleman, where Whippleman would bring on different characters to try and take out The Undertaker, just like Kamala that we spoke about 
uh, on one of these events. And in the middle of the rumble, Harvey Whippleman comes down the aisle with the eight foot tall giant Gonzalez character, which when you see that now, it's just completely ridiculous. As a eight going on nine year old, I was kind of in awe of it. Uh, but then I was in disappointment because, uh, you know, the Undertaker and the Giant Gonzalez got, you know, got into it and, and um, the Undertaker was eliminated and that was the end of his Royal Rumble. So that was, that was disappointing for me watching this in real time, but still is one of those things that makes this a memorable event from my childhood and another nostalgic one for me. And next up, Survivor Series 1993. Now I always recall Survivor Series being timed around Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving weekend, I guess. Um, and I love this cover art of Lex Luger in his All-American uh, gimmick, along with his team getting ready to feast on a Thanksgiving turkey that's dressed as Yokozuna, which is awesome. It's a detail that uh, I never noticed as a kid, even though this artwork is like imprinted in my brain from picking this up at the video store probably multiple times and also seeing it advertised in WWF magazine. I never actually noticed that the turkey's dressed as Yokozuna. And as I mentioned when, when I was talking about one of the other Survivor Series tapes, the matches at Survivor Series that I always loved the most were the classic four on four or five on five tag team elimination style matches. And, and this event is top to bottom Survivor Series tag team matches. With that said, going through the match list, there's really nothing to write home about here. We've got the family feud match, which is Bret Hart, Owen Hart, and the two other Hart brothers taking on King Jerry Lawler and his Knights of the Squared Circle. I, from memory, I believe Shawn Michaels actually um, took the role of Jerry Lawler. I have no idea about the Knights of the Squared Circle. We've got a team made up of Bam Bam Bigelow, Bastion Booger, and the Head Shrinkers taking on the Four Doinks. I mean, it's all very gimmicky. It's 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 kind of childish stuff. But at the end of the day, I was I was eight going on nine. Maybe I was nine years old when this came out, and I loved all the gimmicky bizarre storylines and, and, and crazy characters. Uh, to watch it now as an adult might be a little bit cringy trying to get through this one. In any case, it is what it is. The main event, like I mentioned before, we've got the All-Americans, Lex Luger, the Steiner brothers, and The Undertaker, who I must say seems kind of out of place on like an American Patriots team. They're taking on the foreign fanatics. You've got Yokozuna, Ludwig Borger, the Mountie, and, and Crush, after Crush turned heel. Um, that's an interesting one. When I look at this, when I think back to, to this era, it, that match was definitely about serving a purpose. Lex Luger was in the midst of his feud with Yokozuna, so we were continuing that along. And, and after this, we had a, a, an interesting feud between The Undertaker and Yokozuna, so this match kind of helped to establish that as well. So another nostalgic one, another one I'm happy to have in the collection. Speaking of The Undertaker and Yokozuna, Next up, we fast forward to the 1994 Survivor Series, one year later, which is headlined by a casket match between The Undertaker and Yokozuna. We've got the usual silliness. We've got a, a Survivor Series tag team elimination match. Clowns are us, go to war with King Jerry Lawler and the Royal Family. What more needs to be said about that? We've got another five on five Survivor Series elimination match, which looks kind of interesting because it's made up of some of the key stars of the era. We've got the Teamsters, Jeff Jarrett, Shawn Michaels, Diesel, Owen Hart, Jimmy Anvil, Neidhart. They're taking on the bad guys, Razor Ramon, the British Bulldog, one, two, three kid, and the Head Shrinkers. That must have only been kind of shortly before Shawn Michaels and Diesel went their separate ways. Um, and then we've got a title match. We've got Bret the Hitman Hart taking on Bob, Back Bob Backlund in a submission only match for the belt. And I believe that was like a really long match, like a 30 or 40 minute match in which Bob Backlund won the world title and then gave it up to Diesel in like eight seconds, very shortly after on a house show. So that's a strange turn of events. Still an interesting one to add to the collection. Love the, the Wild Wild West kind of uh, cover art here. So this one's gonna display nicely. And just another nostalgic one for the collection. And last but not least, we bring it home with WrestleMania 10. Now I find it kind of interesting that the, the VHS cover art or the, the poster art promoting this event focused on the fact that it was the 10th WrestleMania as opposed to kind of promoting any key matches around it. But one thing it does make me think of is the fact that I actually got my head around Roman numerals through following wrestling and through WrestleMania. So I guess uh, my childhood love of wrestling served me well in, in that particular respect. But 
Um, an interesting event, the the event that preceded WrestleMania 10 was Royal Rumble 1994, and I remember that one because there was two winners. For the first time, we had kind of you know two simultaneous winners. Bret the Hitman Hart and Lex Luger kind of eliminated one another at the same time. They were both declared winners, which meant they'd both get a crack at the world title at WrestleMania 10. So I think the way it went down was Luger wrestled Yokozuna for the belt first, uh, and then Bret Hart took on the winner, but then to even the score, so they were both competing twice. Um, Bret Hart fought his brother Owen Hart earlier in the evening, so that's kind of how it worked. And when it was all said and done, Bret the Hitman Hart finished WrestleMania with the belt, which was which was music to my ears as a kid because I, was, I once Hulk Hogan took a back seat and the Ultimate Warrior left um, the WWF. I was always a Bret Bret the Hitman Hart guy. I even had the pink sunnies that I ordered out of the WWF magazine catalog. So that was a fun one for me. And the other match that sticks out from this event is the the ladder match between Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels, another very memorable match. So I'm definitely looking forward to giving this one a watch more than some of the other kind of more silly events that, that we've looked at today. But but once again, another, another nostalgic one, another fun one for the collection. So there you have it. I'm getting closer now to ticking off all of the pay-per-view events on VHS from the WWF of my childhood, 1988 to 1995. I've probably got about 20 tapes now, which probably means I'm about halfway there. So I'm getting there slowly but surely. But like I mentioned, I'm watching out for condition um, and things like mold and the condition of covers. Um, so we're, we're just going to chip away at them bit by bit, but I'm happy with the progress I'm making so far. Hope you enjoyed getting a bit of a look at the additions to, to my collection and uh, hearing my thoughts on or memories from my childhood on each of these events. I think I've rambled just about long enough, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, but until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hit me in the comments with your favorite WWF or WWE um, event of all time, whether it was kind of from your childhood or nowadays. Always interested to know, you know, what's nostalgic to you or, or, or what you guys love. Hope to hear from you in the comments. But that's it for today, guys. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, cheers.